Hi everyone, Hondo the Honda Mechanin here, and welcome back to another video. Uh, if you didn't notice, I was away for a while, so I thought about what I wanted to do a video about that would be uh, interesting to talk about, and I've talked about some old computer stuff in the past, and because that's kind of a thing that I'm really into, I decided, hey, now a thing with computers that I think everybody has to deal with uh, all the time is of course Windows, so I thought, hey, let's talk about all the mainstream versions of Windows. All 11 of them. Yep. So I'm not going to be talking about the more obscure versions of Windows like Windows CE or NT, and I'm certainly not going to talk about every revision of Windows that has existed, but I will preface this by explaining what I mean by the mainstream versions of Windows, that is the major revisions of Windows that were widespread and a lot of people used. Now you might be a bit surprised that there are 11 versions of these, especially because we're up to Windows 10, but of course we know that there's no Windows 9, so really it should be 9 major versions of this. The best I can understand that way Microsoft sees the versions of Windows going. Between 3 and 7 there should then be only 3 versions of Windows, which I think we all know is not true. So the best that I can gather is that is that Microsoft doesn't consider Windows 98 and ME to be their own operating systems, but rather just versions of Windows 95, which means that those other two slots are probably taken up by XP and Vista. But that's obviously not how the rest of the world views Windows, so I'm just going to go with this particular definition. We're going to go through the numeric versions of Windows, the Windows versions that had years and la random letters and words in their names, and then, of course, the return to the numbering system. And yeah, I also think it's dumb to jump from Windows 8 to Windows 10, but, but Microsoft is not the first tech company to use completely confusing num numeric schemes. So let's not get hooked up on the details. I start talking about these Windows versions, their pros and cons, in chronological order. So let's start with Windows 1, which came out in 1985, and is probably the second most obscure version of Windows ever. Now, when it came out, it was viewed as something of an interesting uh, new kind of way to use a computer. However, it didn't gain a lot of traction and it did not get a lot of support from uh, different software developers. A big reason for this is that it was really just uh, simplifying the MS-DOS operating system into a graphical format. Also, its system requirements were quite high, especially considering that you have to load it from a floppy disk. So apart from the fact that it was the Origins is one of my favorite fonts, as discussed in a previous video of mine, the first version of Windows didn't sadly make a huge impact at the time, and neither did the most obscure version of Windows, which is Windows 2, which came out a couple of years later, and it was so obscure that there was only ever one revision made to it. Windows 2.1 was specifically designed to make Windows compatible with certain models of Intel machines that had just come out. And you can probably tell that it wasn't a huge upgrade when you consider that the only real noticeable changes was, was a change in color scheme and the fact that this version of Windows actually required you to install it to your hard disk. The real reason the first two Windows r failed to really make a huge impact was the fact that serious computer users at this time really preferred to have the full usage of MS-DOS and also ha running a graphical user interface on top of MS-DOS, which is something w that Windows actually just kind of kept doing for a long time was really eating away at the limited resources that the computer had. And by the way, I kind of like the screwy color scheme of Windows 1, and I always kind of thought Windows 2 looks kind of boring. You might have noticed that neither of the first two versions of Windows actually had the Windows logo, although Windows 2's splash screen at least began to have something resembling the Microsoft logo that we now all recognize. So between the lack of application support, the fact that there really weren't any gains for these operating systems, meant that Windows 1 and 2 were just fun little experiments, but never meant for huge commercial success. When Windows' fortunes finally began to change with Windows 3, this is the version of Windows that I was first exposed to, and it's probably the version a lot of people my age group were first exposed to. Windows 3 was really much more elegant in every sense of the word compared to the previous two versions, and this was particularly true for the later revisions of the Windows 3 operating system, collectively known by the rather cool title of the Windows 3.x line. 
because already with Windows 3.1, they added a cool feature which was support for sound. Yes, the original Windows 3.0 version did not have sound. So Windows 3 was really the first time that other software developers started to actually make software specifically geared for Windows. And yes, this was the first op Windows operating system that actually had games on it, but I have to be honest here that a lot of the Windows 3 games that you might be familiar with really fell into one of two categories. They were either those really ridiculously simple ones like Solitaire, Minesweeper, you know, games that were designed to not take up too much of the computer's processing power, which is why they're kind of simple and doinky. But during the early 90s, the processing power of computers was going up exponentially each year. So towards the end of its lifespan, there were actually some very respectable games also on Windows 3. But a gaming platform, it was not. If you were going to play games on a PC at that time, you were still going to be using mostly MS-DOS. But it was a huge image change for Windows, where it now started to become more and more commonplace. It also marked a very powerful shift in the power balance of the whole computer industry because it was around this time that Microsoft actually started licensing Windows to multiple computer manufacturers and were starting to break away from IBM. So in other words, the balance of power was being shifted more and more away from IBM towards Microsoft. Which is probably why Windows 95 became one of the most popular operating systems of its day. Windows 95's huge explosion into popularity was really the result of this kind of perfect storm of different factors. As I mentioned, the processing power of computers was becoming increasingly powerful throughout the 90s, and Windows 95 managed to hit that sweet spot when having a graphic user operating system as your standard operating system was now actually seen as somewhat viable. The World Wide Web had just been launched a couple of years before, so Windows 95 made using that very simple. And of course, Windows 95 was the first version of Windows that had, that had very broad and wide support from game developers as well. And it probably also helped that the few competitors that Microsoft still had in the operating system market were either in the process of going bankrupt or had already gone out of business completely. Our first computer was a Windows 95 machine. I have a lot of fond memories of it. It had a lot of cool programs that came pre-installed with it, which made it one of the most versatile versions of Windows that was ever released. And yet at the same time, if you came of computer age at the time of Windows 95, you might also recall that it it was also one of the most ridiculed operating systems of all time. You go through some of the early image memes of the early computer years and you will find a lot of very, very vicious anti-Microsoft stuff in there. Why Windows 95 was so hated is a topic that I might actually make a separate video out of because it's actually quite interesting. But some of the main factors for it was the fact that when it was first launched, Windows 95 did have a lot of stability issues, as all new operating systems do, which when you think about it isn't really a fair criteria to criticize an operating system on. And then it did have this new fantasy feature called plug and play, which was supposed to get rid of this huge problem that home computers had where you would buy a new joystick or a graphics driver or something and it would never be compatible with your particular computer setup and it was going to be this magical program that was going to solve all those problems and yeah, it did not work exactly the way Microsoft intended. But you know, it's the thought that counts. So it probably surprises no one that when a much more stable, far more upscalable version of Windows came out a couple of years later called Windows 98, it has basically gone on to become one of the most beloved operating systems of all time. 98 literally was like 95 in every sense, but better. The machine you actually see behind me is a Windows 98 machine and we kept using this thing all the way until 2005. I would say the only negative thing about Windows 98 was that there was obviously some compatibility that was lost with certain games and applications that ran on Windows 95, but I would say that compatibility, but that compat, but that compatibility, but that compatibility loss was only about like 10 to 5% of applications. So it was a rather painless shift from 95 to 98 overall. Then however came Windows Millennium Edition, which is probably one of the most maligned versions. In fact, in fact, I might go so far as to say it might possibly be the most hated version of Windows ever. Certainly it was the first time that people actually en masse 
avoided installing newer version of Windows because they didn't think it was any good. Windows Millennium Edition was, of course, ushered in in 2000. And from what I gather, people really hated it because it removed a lot of essential features of Windows 98, on top of which it was just a kind of a buggy mess when it first launched. I remember my cousins had a Millennium Edition computer and we did have some weird compatibility issues. The fact that there are software that you can now find that explicitly exclude ME from the list of ver versions of Windows that it's compat that they're compatible with, I think says a lot about what a huge misstep as an operating system it is. Which is why people were more than happy to sit tight and wait for the next thing to come along, which was of course Windows XP. Windows XP was the first version of Windows that did not run on top of MS DOS. And unlike ME, it was already fairly stable from the get-go. It had a whole new slew of cool new applications like, you know, Movie Maker. And I think XP probably rivals the popularity of 98 as a version of Windows because it was so readily accepted and such a huge success story from the very get-go. The one huge problem that XP did have was, was probably displaying how naive the whole world was to the threat of cyber attacks at the time. You might remember early 2000s is when broadband internet started to become a thing. And as computers were increasingly online 24-7, a couple of years after XP launched, People started to realize that there were some rather gaping security holes in the architecture of Windows XP, which led to the release of Windows XP Service Packs 1 and 2. And this was a kind of a small mini panic that people had. Probably the most unnecessary of all mini panics since that whole chaos about the Y2K bug. But unlike the Y2K bug, this was an actual security flaw in Windows design, which of course was then very quickly fixed, so not a lot of people actually noticed. What people did then notice was of course Windows Vista, the second most hated version of Windows and it, it was fine. Vista unfortunately kind of got the Windows 95 treatment when it first came out, which is to say that it was very unstable upon its initial release, which yeah, duh, that kind of tends to happen with a lot of operating systems, including ones that have Windows in the title. The other more egregious thing that people didn't like about Vista was that it, that it break, did break some compatibility with applications that ran on Windows XP. And I do have to admit that I maybe lack a little bit of context for Vista because by the time I was using it, I think Microsoft had already ironed out most of the issues with it and I never had a Vista computer myself. But I think it does say a lot about Vista's lack of popularity that a lot of people opted to just keep using XP instead of getting Vista specifically because of these kinds of issues. So it was one of the lesser successful versions of Windows. That's all really I can say. As far as actual flaws goes, it wasn't really that bad. Then came Windows 7, and Windows 7 of course became that operating system where everybody just took the time to breathe in and realize like their operating systems were getting kind of out of date, that it was time to get something newer and up to date. And Windows 7, again, was very stable from the get-go. It did get a very positive reception from the get-go. The computer that I'm editing this on with was a Windows 7 computer. That's foreshadowing for the future. So honestly, I wish I had something else to say about Windows 7. The most annoying thing I remember is how is the way it used to do system updates, which was it just kind of very sneakily downloaded a big update while I was doing other stuff. And then when I closed down the computer, it would start crunching up the update, and then I would have to restart the computer, and then it would have to finish that update, and you know, that was a bit of that was a bit of a hassle. It still is, but as, of, as far as I can tell, there weren't really any huge problems, and, gen and generally, people seem to like Windows 7. Windows 8 was kind of a weirdo because it wasn't meant to replace 7. It was really a version of Windows that was designed for use in tablet computers and smartphones, like the one I'm currently recording this video on. Windows 8 did receive its fair amount of criticism, but it was mostly from people who made the mistake of installing it on their desktop computers, which it wasn't really designed for, but it did do this unfortunate thing, which I still kind of hate, which it came with a lot of applications that were preloaded that you could not uninstall or get rid of and which would mess around with your file preferences and things like that, which is something that I'm still not a big fan of. The problem with that is that it was taking a feature that was actually fairly useful for something like a tablet computer, 
or a smartphone. But if you are a serious desktop PC user, that's, that's not the way you really prefer your applications to be. So yeah, Windows 8 is another bad version of Windows, if you want to call it that. But, but it was kind of inoffensive because it wasn't really trying to replace Windows 7. For that, we have to talk about Windows 10, which is what my computer uses now. Now, four years onward, I think the outrage over Windows 10 now seems a little petty and almost a little childish. I mean, Windows 10 is running fairly steadily even on this computer, which I've had to change the hard drive for. But I think we all know the real reason everybody hated Windows 10, and that was the way Microsoft went about distributing it, which was to tell everybody that there was an option to update your version for, of Windows for free, and then lying about the fact that that it was completely optional. Like for me, I just woke up one day and my computer started updating to Windows 10. It didn't luckily break anything. I had already updated my laptop to be a Windows 10 compatible, so, you know, so I knew based off of that that the OS wasn't like the devil or anything. But I do have to question why Microsoft decided to handle it that way. And yes, I know there were a lot of news stories about people with computer systems that started updating to Windows 10 all by themselves, which did break a lot of stuff. And yes, that was very tragic. It seems like botched releases is kind of a trend that Microsoft's been on for the past couple of years. But looking back on it, the only thing that I really hate about Windows 10 is that same thing as with Windows 8, that there's a lot of integrated applications on Windows 10 that I never ever use and frankly don't want to use because in a lot of cases my older programs work way better. And again, I lost some compatibility with certain games that ran on Windows 7 just fine. So it was a mess, but it's a mess that Microsoft has been trying to apologize for to us for a long time now and, and I've long since forgiven them for that. So that's my talk on the Windows operating systems and I'll maybe make a follow-up video on a couple of the topics that I touched upon. So tell me, what was your favorite version of Windows? I think I have to go with Windows XP myself. I, I mean, I do love Windows 98. That's kind of another classic operating system for me. And I, I have a lot of fond memories of 95 because that was really the computer of my childhood. So until next time, I'm Hunter Donna Mekinen. See you on the next one.